Oxford College of Business. All we do, all we are, is business education. Deputy Governors, uh, Mrs. Ramanathan, senior in the management uh, colleagues. Now, it's a great privilege and honor to be here with you as the governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka is one of the great institutions in this country. And I'm acutely aware that a primary responsibility, arguably the primary responsibility, of the governor is to uphold its reputation and credibility. And in, I can assure you that I will do my utmost to do so at all times. Of course, I can't do this on my own. I need the cooperation of each and every one of you to maintain this as one of the great institutions in the country. You know, my parents uh, went abroad when I was about 11 years old, so I had much of my secondary and university education abroad. But as I was doing my degree and thinking of uh, what I should do in the future, of course, I had been abroad for many years, but I did come back every, every year for my summer holidays, so kept in touch with Sri Lanka. And there was no doubt in my mind as to what my career should be. And that was to be uh, as a staff member of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. The Central Bank had such an awesome reputation. This was in the 70s. If you think of the iconic figures who have been on the Central Bank staff, these are legendary figures in this country. I don't want to mention any names because I might miss some out. But you just look back through the history of the Central Bank and you, some, you see some great names, people who have made massive contributions to this country. So I wanted to be part of that narrative. And so I came back and uh, started life um, as a probationary staff officer uh, of the Central Bank. And um, I must tell you, you know, when I was working for the Commonwealth Secretariat um, almost for 20 years, as uh, Dr. Nandalal said, um, obviously one travels around. There are 54 members of the Commonwealth. Um, and so we've been to many countries. And invariably there are various occasions and you're introduced. And I was always introduced by saying that I started my career uh, in the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, and that was a great source of pride, uh, to be able to say that I uh, started uh, my working life uh, in this institution. And I continue to be enormously proud that I was part of this staff of this great institution for 15 years. So in a way, it's the f coming the full cycle. It's like coming back home after a long absence. Uh, it's a great pleasure, privilege, and an honor uh, to be able to come back. Now, <clears throat> of course, I'm deeply indebted to His Excellency the President for appointing me as the Governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. I'm also indebted to the Honorable Prime Minister and the Honorable Finance Minister for supporting my appointment. And um, I very much hope that I will be able to fulfill the trust they have reposed in me. Now, when I uh, met the president, he just told me one thing. He said, do your work in a straight way and do not fear anybody in discharging your duties. Now, my intention is to follow his direction and to carry out my functions uh, according to his wishes. Now, um, when I met the Honorable Prime Minister, he laid out his vision for where he take, wants to take this country. And there is a big role for the central bank. And in many ways, if we are not able to fulfill our functions in the way it should be uh, fulfilled, in terms of creating a platform for macroeconomic stability with strong macroeconomic fundamentals, uh, having financial sector stability, so there is confidence, confidence right through the system. Nothing else is possible. That is the first step, to get strong macro fundamentals, to have the financial sector, which is the lifeblood of the country, stable, and people within the country and outside having confidence in it. So that's our responsibility, uh, and, uh, and as I said, 
because I genuinely believe that nothing else will really take off unless we are able to do our job well, to do our func fulfill our functions well. So we have a big responsibility, uh, and I look to all of you for assistance and corporations in doing this. As uh, the deputy, deputy governor mentioned, uh, I did play a little bit of sport in my youth, and one of the lessons that I learned, the key lesson probably from playing sport, is that a captain is only as good as his team. Um, you know, however uh, smart or clever the captain is, unless his team has talent and there's teamwork, it's not going to work. Now, having been through the process myself, I know how the central bank recruits its people. It is able to draw on the best people in the country. So in front of me, I know there is enormous talent. And the important thing, though, is that talent alone is not enough. We need to be absolutely together for that talent to bear fruit, to contribute to the development of this country. We need to work as one. We need to have common objectives. Not all of us are going to be you know, fond of each other. That's human nature. But we need to be professional enough to put those things aside and to achieve our common objectives. And now, there are a number of important things that need to be done, uh, which we, um, once I've spoken to the senior management, it's, you know, it's only 48 hours <laughs> since I knew about this appointment, which is a bit of a surprise as well. So I, I'm not as well prepared as I would like to have been before I came before you. Uh, but I certainly will uh, be talking to the deputy governors, the senior management, and eventually the monetary board uh, to work out what we need to do. Uh, and then maybe at that point I will speak to you again uh, to share with you uh, what we have to do uh, in the, say, the next three months, the next year, the next three, five years. Uh, we need to think through. Because as I said, the central bank has to really set the tone to set the framework for everything else to happen. Now, I don't want to go on for too long, and I just really want to leave three thoughts with you as to what the central bank, uh, in my view, uh, should be imbued with, what its culture should be. One is clearly integrity. Two is technical excellence. And three is professionalism. Um, I would like those three concepts to be the guiding principles for all of us as we go forward. And if any of you think that I am not living up to those principles, please find a way of, I, it used to be the ninth floor. I don't know what it's called now, the, the, the 15th floor, is it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> please find a way of uh, getting that message to the 15th floor that I personally am not living up to those three principles. Because that, in terms of leadership, uh, that's important. I need, I need to be able to set an example. And I'm going to do my best to do so. And if there's ever any shortcomings, as I said, I would like to hear. I want to encourage uh, a, a culture of discussion, of debate, of openness. Um, so please uh, help me to do that. Uh, it should never be personal if somebody has a different opinion to you. Uh, we need to put our heads together. We will have different views. We need to throw it out in the open, discuss, uh, and then uh, eventually find the best, best way forward. And, you know, there's always um, um, concern about the balance between politics and economics. Um, in my view, um, for much of our post-independence years, and I'm not putting this on one party or the other party or one government or the other, but if you look back from 1948, for most of the time, politics has trumped economics. Um, it's our job to convince our politicians that good economics is good politics. Um, we need to, as a central bank, to get away from this cycle of stop-go policies 
of creating artificial booms uh, through uh, uh, misaligned uh, policies. We need to set a good framework, as I said, for the economy. The, our elect, we have a represent, representative democracy. Uh, the people elected by the people, the government, of course, have sovereignty reposed in them. However, the Monetary Law Act sets out some very specific responsibilities for the central bank. And it is up to us to fulfill those responsibilities in a very technocratic, objective, and free way. That is not to say that we should be criticizing the government of the day. That's not our business. But there are channels through which we can get independent advice through the government. I'm very keen, uh, and I've spoken to our leaders too about this, that the central bank does its work independently and in a technical way and discreetly advises the government about what we think is the best way forward for those uh, segments of uh, policy uh, and uh, practice for which the central bank has responsibility. So I need your cooperation. Thank you. Thank you very much.